Hey everyone, this is Ghost Who Dad, and welcome to my 10th game of the 5th season of the Blizzard Online Ladder. I played this game a couple of days ago, and uh, if you've been watching my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ghostwhodad, you will have seen that that game was quite a surprising game from my point of view, uh, with, a, with a particular point where I was very much behind in the worker count and figured the game was over, and uh, due to some timing pushes prompted by... Um, my real life external to the game circumstances, I was able to pull out a win, so I thought it would be good to take a little review of this game, check out the replay, and uh, see exactly what happened. This is actually my second review of this replay. The first one I did a couple of nights ago, uh, but I missed a couple of things. Um, some of the, one of my YouTube viewers uh, made a comment that made me uh, want to take a second look at this game as well as I thought I could uh, do this cast a little bit in a uh, shorter amount of time than the first one. I did a lot of pausing and slowing down on the first one, so I figure my YouTube fans would appreciate a slightly um, shorter cast. Excuse me. <coughs> so, um, yeah, be checking this out. So both of us uh, started off very similarly with the Supply Depot and Barracks coming down, so not a lot of changes between the two of us players here. Um, Terran versus Terran, mirror matchups. The beginning of that deviation comes here with the second barracks from my opponent. And if we check out the um, supply tab here, we can see that we're tied up on worker supply. So it'll be interesting to see, taking a look at this time, you know, see 224. I'm not going to be pausing this game. I might slow it down just a little bit at a couple of key uh, military encounters. But looking at the differences here, I'm going for gas and putting three harvesters on that gas, and that's an important distinction to make. Um, I did that a little bit different from my previous Build Your Own Banshee um, experiences, and now going for a second refinery here because I didn't want to run out of gas because I wanted to go straight into building those Banshees and those tanks. My opponent, however, is going for essentially a gasless start. Uh, he has no units on gas, but instead he has all of his... SCVs on those minerals if we check out the worker supply tab. I'm actually behind by one worker and checking out the income tab. He's ahead on his mineral income by about a hundred a minute, uh, which is basically two marines. So if we just kind of keep an eye on that, um, our supply is basically the same. We're both at 17 at this point and uh, his uh, mineral income is slightly higher. You can see he's starting to bank minerals here and starting to produce marines out of both of these barracks. So despite my attempt, uh, if you watch my previous cast, the cast where this was done live, uh, you'll remember that I was trying to pump out marines constantly from this barracks. And um, because of that, we can look at my army supply being fairly up with him, even though he has more barracks. But as time goes on, you're going to see a lot more barracks coming out lot more marines coming out from these barracks. He's now got a triple barracks up. Now if we check out the number of SCVs he has on the mineral line, he's got about 15, checking over that income. Uh, he is up at uh, 600. So that's pretty good. He's close to a maxed out mineral line. Uh, you get about 700 or so um, out of a maxed out mineral line, meaning three workers on every mineral patch. Mules add to that. So at 700, he could build seven barracks, uh, naked barracks, without reactors, uh, and uh, be pumping them out at a constant rate. Now he's got, uh, he's not, now he's starting to put down his refineries here, and he did upgrade to his orbital. That's a key distinction between the two of us, and he's doing a scan to see what, um, if we check out his view, he sees everything. He sees the, see the factories already down, and the, um, and the uh, starport on its way. Uh, not sure that he's going to be expecting Banshees. I don't see any engineering bay coming down for him just quite yet. Uh, but he does have the orbital, and he did see that I didn't. And I think that's a pretty key distinction at this point. He's actually supply blocked at 27. Uh, let's take a quick pause. I said he wouldn't pause too much. Okay, let me, we'll, we'll slow down the speed here. So if we look at the worker supply, I'm actually ahead by one worker, even though we both killed one. And income-wise... Um, we're pretty close, but once he starts putting down meals, he's going to be far ahead of me. So at this point, our production is very similar, and our right now our supply is exactly the same, but look at this slight difference in army supply. I've got 11 to 10, and uh, it's good that we're slowing this down. So he's coming in with, looks like, 11 marines compared to my uh, 7 plus a doodad here, and I should be getting this banshee up. I 
decided to put it here behind the smoke. So popping up the hit point tower, we're going to see how this goes. So I was targeting firing, target firing with these marines on particular marines in his group. And you can see that I'm doing a pretty good job of whittling, the, of whittling them down one at a time. And you can tell that difference because at the end of the day, um, he only had uh, two marines that were damaged. So that means I successfully killed four. And out comes another marine here. Now here's where I bring in the SCVs. So the point of bringing in the SCVs is I've gotten used to thinking that as of SCVs as defensive um, units at the beginning of the game. Now you see they're all bunched up here, so that was kind of a mistake. Only a few of them could attack the marines at a time. But they're actually doing a pretty good job, and here comes out the tank. Now at this point, as soon as that tank popped, I probably could have ran these SCVs away. The tank by himself could have taken out those marines. But instead, I lost um, many more SCVs than uh, perhaps I needed to. So now uh, is that crucial point in the game where I mentioned that I was significantly behind. And I think a lot of people would have quit at this point. Um, I'm down 7 to 16 workers. He's got almost um, more than double, uh, like two and a half times as many workers as I do. Even though our army supply, in army supply, I'm actually ahead. And now he's going to bring in um, a small group of marines, which are going to be no match for this tank. Uh, the tank can, it looks like, you know, three shot each marine and only take a little bit of damage in return. And now I'm up to two banshees. So now taking a quick slowing down of the speed, again, try not to pause so that this game doesn't get too long. We can see that my opponent, while that's all happening, he's upgrading his barracks and building a factory trying to catch up. And take a look here, he's expanding to the gold expansion. So that was a pretty good move on his part. Um, the uh, general consensus a safe time to expand is when you attack because your opponent will not be looking to counterattack as he'll be defending the attack that you're putting down. So going for an expansion, and in his case going for the natural, which is probably not expected by myself, um, I may come down here to scout to see if he's expanded, and if I don't see anything, assume that there's nothing there. Now in my case, I was trying to be a little bit smarter than that. But of course, these banshees stopping here on the Silnaga Tower does not give them additional vision to see this. And um, if we uh, back up the clock just a little bit here, I am breaking some rules. Hopefully, this doesn't last too long. Um, we can see what my vision is that I actually don't get vision whatsoever that he is building an expansion there. I get really close and don't see it. So that's pretty crucial. Um, that would have been an obvious place to scout, uh, to be honest. So I'm not sure why I missed that, uh, but that would be an improvement for next time. Speed back the time back up. I came over here to check out this expansion, but if we check out that um, supply tab, he's actually up to double supply, which if you remember before, he was actually like two and a half my supply. So I'm actually starting to catch up, which is pretty surprising, and I haven't um, upgraded my command center to an orbital yet. So I had plenty of production structures, um, I just didn't have any money. And so now these um, Banshees are coming in, starting to kill some SCVs. I'm running them over here to the left. Now here was a, an interesting faux pas. So these Marines, I'm kind of kiting these Marines around. I decided to go on back and try to get a few more kills. But of course, I make the uh, serious mistake of running in between two groups of Marines. <laughs> so uh, that was a major mistake there. And uh, I probably could have noticed that he was putting a reactor down, which means I should have no fear of any uh, Banshee harassment in return. And again, my Banshee missing the fact that he is working on this um, expansion at the gold. So, so far his gamble of expanding to the gold, kind of a ninja expansion, uh, has worked in his favor. And he's starting to produce um, tanks and marines in mass, four marines at a time. Uh, one tank coming out of here. And I still don't see an engineering bay, uh, which would be good against cloaked banshees, as I would assume that be something he was worried about. But, I mean, he gained a significant advantage by killing all those SCVs at the front. If we check out the worker supply, um, I was able to prune uh, those workers down. So remember, he was up to double. So now he's um, up to, what, one and a third, something like that. So th that Banshee harassed with those two Banshees actually did quite a bit of economic damage. Had they come up here, they would have even done a terrible amount of damage um, and evened up the score quite a bit. But if we take a look at the army supply tab, our army supplies is pretty similar, and part of that is because I'm investing this money in these uh, tanks and banshees, which are each worth um, three supply. We took three supply there, checking out the banshees, three supply there. So the tanks and the banshees supply-wise are very valuable. Um, now what's funny is that uh, somewhere around this point, if you remember watching my original live cast, I basically uh, did an all-in push based on... Um, that I was trying to finish up the game. 
So uh, that actually led to kind of an interesting point because right now I'm really behind in worker supply because he's starting to kick in both um, both bases are producing workers. So now he's you know he's up to double. So uh, at this point, oh now he's supply blocking himself. That's kind of cute. Um, so th that's an interesting point um, is that even though I'm starting to catch up, I've got my orbital command down. At this point, if I keep going for the macro game, right, I try to hold out and go longer, there's no way I can catch up. I, I am way behind. If he's able to keep up with, with his production, I'm in serious trouble. He's got a lot of uh, production facilities. He can make um, six marines at a time or four marines and two marauders and a tank, and he's got a whole flock of Medivac's just building up energy right here, so at this point the game is is just waiting for me to lose um, if I go for the long game. Now at this particular point in time, even though I'm only on 43 supply, um, army supply wise, oh look, look at that, army supply wise we're about 38 to 30, so we're kind of close, but I mean look at that difference in worker supply. I mean clearly he is, he is way ahead at this point. Um, and at his expansion, he's just got the double refinery, so he's getting quite a bit of gas. He's just got one worker on each, which is fine. Uh, focusing on the mineral stuff, and he's starting to build up his 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 doom day, uh, his drop of doom <laughs> coming up here. That's five loaded medevacs, not completely loaded 100%, um, but that'll be good enough. But little does he know, I am moving out there at, at this time. So let's just give a quick pause. Look at the uh, sorry, slow down, not pause. If we look at the worker supply, I'm at, I'm at exactly half of his workers, um, but uh, military-wise, I'm actually at, uh, I don't know, uh, what is that, two-thirds, something like that, and uh, I'll just do, not, not, I'll just do control V, so he can see that I've got this group here, I'm not sure that he necessarily saw that on his screen, but as he comes in here to hit the base where normally uh, I'd have all my workers here undefended or whatever, He's coming in, and most of my value, most of my money and my investment is over here. All my workers are over here. All of my uh, army units are over here. And so most of my money is not in my base. And I lifted up very quickly and uh, got the orbital command out of there right away. And I think the barracks survives and the uh, starport kind of accidentally survives. So um, coming into his front door, most of his army is in my base instead. And so it was actually, and since I'm not afraid to attack with my workers, as you can see here, um, I was actually at a uh, severe army advantage here. Now I took some time to move my units inside of his base um, so that they weren't stuck here on the outside getting stuck on themselves. And here's an interesting point here. He wasn't able to kill off my orbital with his marines. Now his marines don't have stem, but he ran the marines away, put the medevacs on the orbital, which I think that was just a misclick. I think he did attack on the orbital, and so the marines are actually chasing the orbital. But then he stops, tries to kill the barracks, uh, but the barracks is going to get away. And then instead he focuses on killing this factory, which was dead, guaranteed from the siege tanks. But, you know, the point of me mentioning all that is that he didn't come over to kill this um, orbital command. And not only that, but he also brought all the medevacs, which are full of energy, with the orbital command, and so those are just going to die from the small force of marines. So even at this point, he could run them away. I mean, this is a pretty huge investment. This is 10 supply of army right here. So after that, um, basically base trade situation, and you know his marines and stuff killed off the refineries, but that means absolutely nothing. And he wasn't even able to kill the starport, which honestly, I don't, I'm not sure. I think maybe at the end I controlled it, but. You know, for the most part, no. Now, in answer to uh, Legit Ninja, I think it's 2111 <laughs> on my YouTube channel, uh, he mentioned why did my opponent have all of these supply depots and an engineering bay at the expansion. And as you can see right here, that was in <clears throat> excuse me direct response to my attack on his main. So that does answer the question. He didn't make these ahead of time. Um, he was reacting to my destruction of his main to build those things. But... He's got a lot of money. Um, I actually only have 77 here, and his army is just kind of hanging out here at the natural expansion. Let's go ahead and speed up back to faster time. And uh, I mean, we all know the story from my point of view, sitting here inside his base. Um, Going to start to be mining some minerals here. But if you look at what he's doing, he's he has a very good response. He's got a lot of money. 
and he has a lot of production that he knows. But if we check back at that army supply tab, we're back to being on even ground because we're, you know, he basically had two bases compared to my one, but I blew one away and I took all my workers with me. And so now we're back to a tie game basically at 18 minutes into the game. Now he is on the rich minerals, <coughs> which is at an advantage to me, and he's going for double factory with the four barracks. So, and he does have a leftover army force. I mean, if you look at the supply, we're at, you know, 48 to 49, so very similar. Very similar army supply, very similar worker supply. So at this point, he does have a ch We're basically even. So, I mean, he's got plenty of production structures, especially with these four barracks. He could have brought these back to his, um, you know, base, base at the main. Now, I think this is where I discover that he has stuff over here, um, was when I brought this... Um, uh, barracks over and I was like aha look there's something there and some of that's because I killed this orbital now his uh, response to all of this is to do a quick counterattack with his forces now he knew that I had uh, banshees and tanks and marines and so I'm almost surprised that he tried to go for such a quick counterattack but if you look here I only had a little bit of vision to what was going on over here now if you look at the mini map the mini-map will save you because the red and the blue show up very well on that background. So I think at this, this, you know, suddenly, I think right when these guys came down is when I recognized it. So they siege up, I bring everybody forward. Now, um, I'm going to slow this down and uh, rewind a little bit. So uh, the important thing I want to cover here is that he's, he's got an okay force. I think we're, we're not really tied as far as army supply because I've got these five banshees that only his marines can attack. But sieged tanks, and we'll just do a quick pause to look at the siege tank stats here. Um, if you look at that attack, this attack is, <coughs> excuse me, is 35 damage and 50 to armored and that is a um, an area of effect attack. So just two shots from two siege tanks will immediately instantly kill uh, marines inside this attack radius and if you look at the radius here I'm covering most of his group so most of his marines are inside that radius and so as they come in as a bunch they get damaged very heavily by these tanks um, the, the banshees were just kind of overkill now of course in a alone situation where you have tanks by themselves um, this group may have been able to come in, especially with the medevacs healing them, been able to come in and, and kill off one or two of the tanks, or maybe all of the tanks by themselves. But that's why I grabbed all of the workers and all of these other army units in, was to distract these units from the tanks, and so they would take maximum damage from the tank fire. Now, of course, the tank fire is hitting my own units at this time, so a lot of my own units are getting destroyed. Um, but uh, these guys were all on auto repair, I think. Yeah, they were all in auto repair, so they were healing themselves. But as much as that particular attack may seem like a mistake on his part, if we check out the supply tab, he's still way, he's now back to being way ahead on worker supply, 21 to 8. But for this brief moment, he has a huge army supply differential. And that's where the second push, I mean, I, I built these barracks because I had a bunch of minerals and whatnot. But um, really at this point I'm really wanting to push again and, and part of that's because I was trying to just finish the game the amount of time and I was like well you know what I just see a couple of marines my vision didn't quite catch that he had anything else here and I didn't see a an orbital command at this base so I said well let's just go ahead and send everything and see what happens and um, my first faux pas of that of course is that I don't recognize that there's a missile tower here, so it's going to take down uh, one of these banshees, and that's just a testament there uh, to the power of a single missile turret it can do quite a bit of damage to these banshees. And as he has built his engineering bay at his expansion, he's starting to build this uh, very crucial missile turret here, which will also um, slow down those banshees. Now he's got the start of an offensive force here, two tanks and a couple of marines, and he's going to decide to do a move out. now. That's kind of interesting. I mean, for all he knows, I'm just cleaning up, I'm establishing the base, but I just happen to push out. Now, he does have this medevac here with some vision of what's going on, a little bit of vision of what's going on. Not sure he's paying attention to that really that much. But here's an interesting um, piece of things happening. These SCVs were with this group, but they basically got distracted by um, 
but they basically got distracted by this barracks. And the Banshees were set on an attack move, and so they just run out and start attacking. Now these Marines stop to hit the Banshees, which means the Marines aren't with the tanks, which left the two tanks to fend off three tanks and a bunch of Marines. And they actually take out one of these tanks. So, in a sense, his force, which was all right, um, especially defended by this missile turret against these Banshees, as you can see. We've got three here, the Marines took out one of them, and this missile turret's going to take out another one. Um, his defensive force would have been okay back here, but because he brought him out and because they got split up by the Banshees and uh, because they got split up by the Banshees and my SCVs were kept safe because they got distracted by that barracks that was damaged, um, I came in with the full force for the second time. So, um, and in that brief amount of time, I was at an army advantage supply-wise. So I, I think, although there were two times when I was very behind in this game, and, um, you know, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I could have GG'd at that point, and I think a lot of people would. I mean, after your worker supply gets down to about five, you kind of give up. But, you know, at that time, I knew that I had wiped out his army with my workers, and uh, I decided to stay in. And, you know, as we saw, the positioning of, you know, the supply count it doesn't show the entire story. Um, the positioning of the units, the timing of when they attacked, um, the you know, composition that I had, um, banshees that couldn't be attacked by marauders or tanks, or SCVs for that matter. <laughs> um, and, you know, that little bit of banshee harassment back here to his mineral line, uh, right after he attacked with all those marines, so I knew he didn't have very many marines to defend. Um, all those things put together um, led up to me being ahead at particular points in time. Again, you know, I think had I waited long enough, he could have recovered from that um, that kind of a base trade scenario. And with the, his advantage in production structures, he could have, you know, surpassed me in army a little bit later. But you know, because due to exterior uh, or external um, external timings. I ended up pushing. It just ended up just, I mean, through no intelligence of my own <laughs> uh, to be a perfect time to attack. Now, he is trying to recover down here on the right-hand side, but he has no minerals despite his production structures, so um, it is game over for him at this point. And, you know, at this point he's seen uh, so much aggression from me, you know, bringing in workers and everything, that uh, um, he just leaves. And, uh, I can't remember if I saw a GG or not. I think I did. But, uh, but yeah, so good game and uh, kind of an interesting replay. It, it does show again um, the power of you know, expanding towards your enemy. In this case, I, exp <laughs> I expanded into my enemy. <laughs> um, and, you know, have, having just a little bit of knowledge about the game flow that, you know, once you've had a big encounter, um, that his units were somewhere else. I mean, basically there was a point where he had this kind of doom drop into my base. And now had all of my units been there, I, I think I would have been okay. We would have traded army a little bit and things would have marched on. But because my army and all of my workers were in a sense kind of out of place, they actually got saved because, you know, that barracks, wherever that is, <laughs> Uh, you know, one of these barracks and the starport and the orbital command survived. That's actually, um, you know, three of my major buildings. The only thing that died was the factory. So I actually got to take most of my base with me to this new base. Um, so, uh, so yeah, kind of an interesting game. And I'm probably, I'm probably talking over to overtime again. But uh, all right, well, this is Ghost of Dad signing out, and we'll talk to you guys next time.